what I'm going to try and do is uh, wrap up, uh, talk about the AGU and more the, a little more of the theory, what we have, and please ask questions because Mr. Kamal said we're going to run short on time, so I'm going to talk about that. So please ask any questions that you have, whether it be related to uh, health issues or regulations right. or anything like that. So let me get back to, uh, uh, I'm going to leave this up here because I'm going to actually bring that unit over here and run it in a little bit. But I, I just want to talk about the AGU. Once again, uh, the AGU can be made in any configuration. It doesn't have to look like this. It doesn't have to look like a gun. It can actually kind of be in a square box in a different configuration. Uh, this is just made for a soldier to handle. Now, when we're out there today, we have a strap on it so you can strap it around and you can, you know, normally put it in a backpack. Uh, the backpack that we had when we ran one of our last tests, this overheated because the backpack closed everything up. All right. We have to make another backpack, which is uh, out of polycarbonate, and it has holes in it, and it'll strap How weight? How weight? The total weight? That the total pack. weight of this? Yeah. I'd say about 21, 22 pounds All right. for, the, for the backpack, somewhere right in that area. Uh, once again, at, I'd say 70% is that battery. I think you asked about the, the battery. Uh, what can we do about that? Well, even if we go to the ion lithium, which is lighter, it's still good. I don't know if it's going to give us long enough power. But it just depends on what you're doing. What he's if the soldier's on the field, okay, and he can get the power from an automobile, he can power his 12 volts. Okay. Uh, we also want to make a subunit that he can plug into to it to try and give him more power. Then he can roll around. Maybe a unit that. You roll around real so you don't have all this weight. In fact, this whole unit right here maybe would go on something that you could pull around, or you know, that would be you have wheels that he doesn't have that weight. You could have a bigger battery. You know, maybe even a car battery or anything. Mm. You know. It's a matter of power. So I don't know if that answers answer your questions at all or if I like your questions. Well let me talk about this display. We have chosen to go with National Instruments LabVIEW. LabVIEW is like visual software. It's up on the screen there. You have, my expertise was, for the government I wrote, C++ for a long time, Java, C++. That's my expertise. I went with LabVIEW because it's very easy to get together, very easy to put together, and, and it's kind of like a visual software. Okay, uh, If you see that on the screen, I can actually, uh, I'm going to do a little demo for you. I'm going to stop that. And I'm going to go to, uh, if I can read this, I'll go to another window. And this window right here, if you can see it, that's kind of the, the window that does the real work. You have the visual window, which is the, the first window, which is this window, which is the display. And then you have the window behind it. Now, that particular window you're looking at, if you look at, uh, let me get over here, because. I point it. Maybe I can point it with the mouse. Let me try it with the mouse. If you can see the mouse, then you can see what I'm doing. Uh, this this right here is what we call a DAC. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the DAC assistant. This right here is another DAC assistant. These two modules bring in the stuff from the gun. Okay, uh, feeds it into a uh, another type of module that does some filtering and another tone module. And the, basically, these are outputs. These are like screen outputs. And these would be the screens right here, right there, okay? And then going back to the heart of the program, and then you have some gates here, and you have some ands, and you have some comparators. So if this voltage at one level reaches this, it's gonna turn on. If we look at this pattern, it matches this pattern, it'll turn the light on, that type of thing. And what are the lights? The lights are like these little lights right there, right there. And they equate to basically these right here. So if I just click on, right click on here, uh, I can get the property page, and it tells me a little bit. Come on, come on. it tells me a little bit, <laughs> a little bit about what that screen is going to look at, how to set it up. So it's a very visual system. Okay, uh, can we combine C with it and very complex uh, algorithms, F, uh, FFT or whatever you want to look at, or different equations, whatever? Yes, it's very, very well built system. So I went with National Instruments. Now, you can get this on the web, download it, and play with it, and they give you all these modules. Uh, they have a lot of code that's already written that we didn't have to write. Different displays. See? I like to use stuff that's off the shelf that we can use. Why invent, reinvent the wheel? Yeah. 
why try and make a battery when we can buy one and fit it in a case? Why buy and make a special case when we can buy a case that'll work? Drill some holes in it. Yes, it would look nice if we had our own case. But you know what? When you're in the business of selling stuff and moving things, you want to use off the shelf, right? LEDs, computers, and things like that. So basically, we went with NI system for software. Uh, we spent $5,000 for that package. And then we have to put add-ons and stuff like that. But it is fairly expensive, but it's still worth it in time, what you do. Now, I'm going to try this. And uh, actually, if I hit this little light bulb here, you'll if you watch the screen closely, okay, you should see, if you can see it, I don't know if I'll, this will demonstrate for you if I turn it on. See the, see the little things going? See the little arrows? See it moving? It's real, a simulation. It's a simulation. Uh, uh, well, uh, that's real. That's real. That's, that's the data flow. Okay. okay. Uh, In other words, uh, if I run it, you can actually see, um, if, I, if I run this, let me take it back here. If I, okay. If I run this, it'll just tell you the data flow. See it coming down, it's getting information, going through the filter, and you can see the arrows and going to the, the knobs and the buttons and everything. It gives you the data flow, which is very nice. In other words, it's a great system for building what we want to build. Okay? It has what we call parallel processing. I can process each one of these barrels, four of them, parallel. Where if I do C, I have to do this part, this part, this part. This thing does parallel processing a lot better and easier, and, and uh, it shows you what you're doing. It's quite a nice system. Um, let me just put the, push that off, take that off, and all right. Now, if we run it now, we bring it out. Basically, you're seeing some signals coming in. If I do the pull, trigger pull, you'll see a pulse coming up, and it changes the light. Now, that doesn't mean too much. To you right now, right? Because you're not seeing all the code behind it. There's a, an awful lot of code that goes on to basically look at SRC. There's a lot of data processing, a lot of different equations. My background's in mathematics. I have a master's in uh, math, mathematics and an electrical engineering degree. Um, I worked with a PhD in mathematics, uh, U of A, and uh, we worked on this uh, algorithm for a long time. Uh, if I went through that, that would take uh, quite a long time. I just want to give you a good basic overview so you have a good idea of what's happening. So once again, I do a trigger pull. Okay, the light comes on. Uh, nothing kind of really happens. I do it for trigger pull over here. Is something going to come on? Will I find something over there? I don't know. Yeah, is there anything over there? Uh, if I hit it fast. Now, when I do a trigger pull, it goes very fast. I, know it, I don't know if you can see the red light or not. Can you see the red light come on? If I do the trigger pull, basically it comes on. It, it, it takes about five seconds, it sends the pulse out, brings them back. Okay. Now, we just don't want a guy to sit there and hold the trigger. That takes a lot of power. I'm trying to reduce the power from the battery. So when they operate it, I want them to do a trigger pull in that area, look in that area. You know, oh. Is there something over there? Hmm? Nothing over there? You lock it. In your luggage. In the luggage. Look in the luggage. Wait. <laughs> I don't know. I think oh, in the luggage. luggage. Let's see if there's, <laughs> is there anything in there. Can you can you open that up? Yeah, just open, open it up. Yeah, yeah. Open it up. See if there's anything in there. A little uh, package or anything? Ah! Little explosives. <laughs> okay? So it picks up explosives. Today you'll see a great demo. Okay? You'll see us pick up explosives at long range. It will pick up explosives. It works very well. Getting back to the software. Once again, why we use NI? Fast, easy, simple software to put together. Why do I do a trigger pull every five seconds? So the guy doesn't sit there and, and, and use a lot of power. Because does he have to? No. Because he's moving around. He's going to look at that area. He knows that area. I don't want to turn on the laser because I don't want to hurt your eyes, okay? Because it's quite powerful. Laser's a good pointer. Shows him, shows him what he's looking at, okay? Today, I'll, I'll demo the gun and I'll have some, maybe one of you guys run the gun also, okay? You run the gun and you can find the stuff, okay? You can look around and try and find it. Does this come off or move like this? Sure. But you really don't need a tripod. But you could set it up at an entry point. 
let's say you want to set this up at the front desk and just have it come on automatically. We could set up the software to turn it on maybe once every five minutes or something and just look at the door to see if we see any explosives. You could do that. You can do whatever you want to in the software. It's set up so it's software intensive. Okay. So once again, one of the reasons why we went with that particular software. Any any questions on that? I know we're seeing that uh, 520. Um, can you set up a different display on there? Absolutely. We can give you whatever you want. If you don't want to see those screens, don't have to bring them up. All I do is red, yellow, green, big screens come up on there. If you don't want this. I'm hoping that we can network the system like you want to, where this will network back into your IT department, and they'll just look at a board that comes up, and when you have explosives around any door of Loxley, boom, it comes on. It's networked. Uh, RJ45 plugs in here. It's a standard uh, RJ45 connector that plugs in here. It can be networked. It has an IP address. So you can look at this all the time. Very easy. Very nice. Can you do it wireless? Sure. Wireless, no problem at all. We're trying to think of ways to make it more uh, easier so people can buy and they say, you know, I want this system. You know, it's not complex. We just connect it up, plug and play. Do we want plug and play? Yes, we want it to go fast and easy. And that's 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 basically what we're doing. We're trying to make it fast and easy. So you can plug it in and go with it. Um, coffee break. Coffee break. <laughs> Any any questions on the uh, the software and that? I mean, no, not yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, and please feel free to ask questions on that. Uh, Mr. Kamal, I like these guys. I'm going to shut this down. Open the door. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try it. Okay. 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 Now, what I like is I like I like you to come around and look at the hardware. Okay. When you're when you're ready. Um, I like people to look at the hardware and come and touch it, feel it. Okay, Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I, I'm going to uh, probably talk about the barrel, but you know, I'll talk about the barrel, but basically the slideshow talks about the barrel, but I can give more information on the barrel than the slideshow. I designed it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here a little bit, and uh, what else do we have? Um, a different color. Okay, and uh, actually this is quite interesting to see. This is me in that command vehicle, 2008. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, the leather cover. Yeah, that's me sitting there, and they run this, this big command vehicle, giant vehicle, and uh, they'd run it down the road 55 miles an hour and would detect the explosives. That was done with Raytheon. That's well documented. I think that's pretty nice to have. Anyway, I just, I like to show that picture of that. Uh, let me... Uh, Try and go on a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, how can you do this for uh, tow booth? Airports. Put it right in the, the concrete. You can put a grid in the concrete the antenna, the one we talked about, and have a system and they have a report back and a car goes by it and we can detect explosives. It's a wonderful system. It's needed. It's, it's a good system. I just like to show the slide a little bit and uh, Restricted areas, different points, entry points, you could have that in place. Um, I'd like to talk about the technology because somebody says, well, what about this technology? Is it really new? Well, it's kind of not new, and it kind of is new. Let me explain. I think, uh, what, 1925, they did the E bomb thing in America where they did this big explosion, and they basically put a big electronic boom, and they blew out lights in Hawaii from California. Okay? It's quite a distance, okay? So the technology is here. It's just how do we look at those patterns? That's the key. It's like DNA was there for years, right? They didn't know how to look at it, but chemically they found out and they figured out how to match the, all the you know patterns up. And then they figured this pattern was this and this and that, and they found out how to use DNA. Well, we have the same thing electromagnetically. Okay. So is it new technology in a way? No, in a way, yes. It's the software that makes it new. And, and kind of like how the coils pick it up. So what are the key points? How, this, how the coils are designed, how the pulse puts out a, a, a different energy, uh, how we look at it in software, and those are the three major parts. You get those all kind of working together, you have a nice detector. Will it detect other than uh, explosives? Yes. We can make it detect water, come on. Anything you want to. Like DNA, everything has a DNA. 
Is gold, gold, can't you take as they're like? Gold. Gold? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think this is season for us. Anything. Yeah. Any kind of matter, any kind of the any kind of call uh, a detector, detector, well, detector. We want to rename it material detector, okay? We really don't want to name it explosive detector. Unfortunately, when you say explosives, people get afraid right away. Anything with explosives. So we're thinking of just renaming it material detector so it picks up any detector. Meat, produce, good meat, bad meat. You have a little handheld unit. I envision something like a UPS reader, you know, or something like at the store. You point it at the, the meat, and it tells you whether it's good or bad. Now, why not? All we got to do is work on the software, get the patterns. So, yes, to answer your question, yes, it will detect gold. That thing you can detect, but up to the software, it control uh, what kind of uh, material or something like that. That's right. All right. That's, it's that's depends on the, the database you have. It depends on the database. Yeah. Yeah. And you can correct the pattern of every metal. Yeah. That's material. right. Every everything you can, you can match and show in the software. That's right. That's right. Now we can now right now we can say it's good or bad or the amount or whatever. But you could also bring it up in a picture and say this is what it looks like. It's almost like an X-ray kind of in a way. It looks like an X-ray. Sense. What's electromagnetic? Now, I've dealt with electromagnetics with the government for a long time, so that's that's also my field of electromagnetics. Um, and if you ever want to talk about that or you want another demo, you really want to get into white papers, I have all that information. Okay. But this is just a lot of boring, long stuff. Depends <laughs> if you like it or not. Yeah? I can sit and do that all day. I love to do software. Okay. I love to sit down and do software all day. The software. That's, I really enjoy doing software. Is it possible to, to design I mean, your plan smaller than this? Yes. Because in, in, the, in the practical term, when you in the operation field, you cannot carry the, the, the big stuff like this in the field, right? Yes. It's harder. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't want a soldier with this hanging on. Yes. It is kind of big. I yes. think it's kind of big. So yes, I envision something at least a quarter size that's small. Mm -hmm. Because after all, what do you do with it? You have a coil, a transmitter. When it falls out, we see something bad. So we can design that much smaller. Like say this is the prototype. And absolutely this one much smaller too. So yes, we can make it much smaller. Um, I'm going to do something I think Mr. Kamal, uh, Mr. Kamal. Yes. Please. <laughs> That's okay. He and I go back and forth all the time. I get mad at him, he gets mad at me. Um, applications, we talked about applications. I won't go through that too much because we know we can put it in subways. We can put it in uh, different, all different places. So we won't go with that too much. And what else we got here? We got um, conclusion, talk about systems. A uh, little propaganda there, uh, L uh, HUs and PBUs. We can network the whole system together. Um, and that's it. Thank you. And that's it. So what I'm going to do is turn this one off. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a shutdown mode here. And I would like to open this up. I'd like to have you take a look at it. So even if you want to turn on more lights, you can. Um, uh, I like to uh, like say I like to I like to see what's going on. Yeah, let me shut down. Shut it down. We'll let it shut down, then we'll shut off the power. And I'll get the uh, green screwdriver. Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know this guy. I, I always call him up for money and stuff. And, and uh, I get mad at him, he gets mad at me, but we're pretty good friends. <laughs> you need to have him. <laughs> You make five out of school diver. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, like, I'll be working, you know, and you get so intense, right? And you work in, you ever work something and you're doing software or building something and, and you're trying to fix it and you need that one screwdriver part and you're looking and someone comes along and they, they say, what are you looking for? I'm looking for that screwdriver. Even sometimes you makes you feel dumb, hand, right? <laughs> even sometimes in your hand, you look. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see it, right? Okay, so let's shut this down. <laughs>